फलकोशवाहिनी It's about all the structures related to genital area and the dhamani salts, so the vessels are put with the other way. Such a condition is called as a vriddhi. Asam bhavishati na pururu bani basti kati muska metre shuvedana maltani graha palakoshi shofa steti. It could be like the initially before the symptoms occur, the patient may have a variation symptoms of pain in the pelvic area or genital area. and it also can be uh, presented with the uh, constipation or maybe the uh, irregular movement of the bowels and the palpable swelling of the uh, areas like now the kapha ja variety of the sorry vata ja variety of the bhuti bhi tatra anila paripurna basti viva akta parusham animitta anila ja vata bhuti matakshade vata bhuti would be presented with the basti uh, mevatram the swelling which is soft in nature and the surface would be rough parusham and it may produce a pain acute pain now a acute pain produced in case of uh, this uh, uh, scrotal area would be seen in case of mumps induced arthritis now arthritis inflammatory pathology of the scrotum could be of viral origin or bacterial origin Viral origin very commonly seen in mumps. Patients of mumps usually develop the uh, involvement of the salivary glands in the beginning, and later on it may result in the testicles. About 30% of the patients of mumps tend to develop arthritis as such. Out of these uh, uh, patients who tend to develop the arthritis, 15 to 30% of them they would end up in atrophy and fibrosis, and hence mumps is one of the causes of. Uh, a reduced the fertility or reduced the sperm count or maybe azoospermia in due course of time depending on one reason so during the acute phase the patient would have pain in the when the arthritis involves arthritis is presented now when i say this arthritis mumps arthritis that doesn't mean that every patient of mumps would have arthritis but a good number of patients of mumps they tend to develop the arthritis and during that phase the clinical symptom would be like the acute pain and pain will be quite acute swelling of course there will be a moderate swelling and initially the swelling would be soft in nature tender but gradually it becomes non tender and there will be an atrophy and hence that's exactly the features which you see in case of vas dilatation a similar symptom to a certain extent a similar symptom also can occur in varicoceles varicoceles are dilated vessels which can produce the swelling and there could be some pain pain which is not really consistent but later on it may result in a reduced fertility but there may not be a fibrosis so whether it has to be considered as a water vibrity or not again there could be a difference of opinion but from my opinion it's the viral origin of arthritis could be considered as water vibrity then pitta vibrity is pakko udumbara sankasham jara jara daha gushma hotim cha ashu samuthana patam pitta vibhim adikshade Now, the in case of the pitta jab the the swelling would be reddish in color. All signs of inflammation would be seen, and the patient would have also the systemic features of the toxicity, temperature being raised, and uh, the uh, local burning sensation would be there. Course is rapid. Now, this is typical in case of infective arthritis. Infective arthritis results in the formation of the pus. 
So patient will present with the swelling which is uh, having acute pain and locally the signs of uh, inflammation would be there and the, it will be fluctuant and uh, if you do the ultrasonography, ultrasonography will show that presence of the turbid fluid that is how it has to be differentiated from other swellings of the scrotum and in that condition the uh, ultrasonography can differentiate that presence of the thick fibrous material and the consistency also be ecogenic. If you, when you open the testicles, the scrotum, the testicle will be seen to be damaged having this multiple pus pockets as such. So that is the typical of a bioseal which is exactly the typical feature of the pithadev vridhi. So pithadev vridhi are definitely the bioseal. Then kathinam alpuvedanam shitam kandumatim shleshma vridhim krishna spotavatam pithavridhilingam pratavridhim ja. Now the kathinam alpuvedanam, the uh, uh, patients with the uh, kapha would have a firm swelling and pain would be lesser and that could be kandu, itching. Now this is seen in case of the hematocyl. Hematocyl is uh, a consequence of uh, presence of uh, leakage of blood into the uh, vaginal cavity, vaginal space and gradually it becomes solidified, clotted and at that state the patient would have relative lesser pain, there would be firm swelling and that functioning presented in the clinical practice has to be differentiated from the testicular tumors. Testicular tumors of course also will be non tender and firm. So whether kapalibruti has to be considered as a testicular tumor or whether it has to be hematocyl, that is the next uh, argument. I would consider this as a hematocyl because it is a pathology which can be cured or treated with the simple treatment uh, like uh, sorry, uh, drainage and hence it is uh, considered as a uh, company vruddhi or maybe some according to some testicular tumors also may be considered as a company vruddhi but uh, okay that is a point of uh, debate as such. That is about uh, the company vruddhi. Krishna Spota Vartam Pitta Vruddhi Lingam Rakta Vruddhi Rakta Vruddhi would be presenting with the, the similar symptoms as that of the Pitta Vruddhi where there would be signs of inflammation but at the same time there will be blackish swelling. This is what we see in case of the fourness gangrene, gangrenous like conditions where there could be a similar pathology. Then in case of the major vruddhi, mrudu snigdam, kandu matim, alpavedanam, tarapara prakasham, medo vruddhi. Major vruddhi is typically as you see in case of the scrotal lymphedema. Scrotal lymphedema characteristically the subcutaneous tissue would be swollen and it is not the testicular swelling, it is the scrotal swelling and the whole surface becomes hard and rough, irregular, the penis becomes embedded and hence that is considered as a, the uh, uh, typical signs of the lymphedema and in Sushila has mentioned the same, rudasnik term, surface could be soft or maybe irregular and itching, painless, comparatively less painful, tarapala prakasham, the surface of the uh, region, the scrotum would be looking like the palm fruit hardened, fibrous material would seen, that is typical of the mesodivruti. Scrotal lymphedema is a, the mesodivruti. Then the mutravruti is the next condition. Mutrasandharva shilasya, mutravruti bhavati, sa gachato amupurna dhruti leva shubhyati mutra krishya vedanam vrishnayam hushvetum koshevishtapa dehde. Ta mutravruti vidyatam. Mutravruti is the typical hydrosyl. Though Sushruta has considered that it is uh, produced, induced due to suppression of the urge of micturition, of course from the present day's point of view, this fact is not confirmed. We are not sure about that whether it is the urge of uh, suppression of the urge for micturition results in a hydrocele or not. The hydrocele now is considered as a consequence of a chronic inflammatory pathology of the testicle or maybe a structural pathology that will be communicated. A congenital hydrocele would be having a communication with the peritoneum, a narrow duct like and tunica vaginalis, the vaginal cavity would have that fluid. Normally the tunica vaginalis would have a layer over the testis and you have a layer over the scrotal surface and there will be a continuous inter exchange of the fluid. The fluid would be secreted from the testicular surface, it will be reabsorbed from the cutaneous surface and this continuous exchange will be equal in the sense the fluid formed in the testicular area will be equal to that of the fluid which is absorbed, hence there will be no net accumulation. Suppose if there is any pathology which has resulted in either increased secretion of the fluid 
or reduced absorption of the fluid that can result in what we call as hydrocele. So hydrocele could be of two origin, either a chronic inflammation of the testicular surface which results in extrative fluid and fibrosis, hence as a result of that the fluid is not absorbed, it gets retained or it could be due to a obstruction of the lymphatic system as in case of the pileated hydrocele conditions. As the lymphatic systems get obstructed, the fluid would be accumulated within so absorptive capacity is reduced and hence it can result in a hydrocele. Of course, a communicating hydrocele or periodic origin is a structural defect where the processes vaginalize the tube which has to be blocked, it may fail to get blocked completely and hence that could be accumulation of the fluid. Again, it could be produced uh, as a fluid in the uh, duct area proximally or it could be the hydrocele as such. So, Apart from these congenital hydrocele, the other conditions are where there could be an abnormality of the fluid exchange. Though Sushul has considered this as a mutra, it is not really the urine as such which is the fluid collected. Of course, Sushul has never mentioned that it is the urine which gets collected or that it is a dosha vitiation induced due to the suppression of the depmicuration. The only missing link which we do not have now is that whether really the suppression of the depmicuration induces these pathologies of abnormality of fluid exchange or not? That's a question which is not yet answered. Okay, that's the point of debate. But otherwise, the clinical symptoms are exactly the same. Where the patient would have a fluctuant swelling, Ambupurna Dhutiriva, a swelling which uh, uh, looks like a bladder filled with water and the Shaito Kosha Shapare, that's the Motravurti or what we call hydrocele. Now, Bharaharana Balavad Vigraha Bruksha Prapatana Divihi Ayasa Visheshi Vaihu Abhi Pravurdaha Prakupitashta Stula Andrasya Isarasita Ekadesham Vigunam Madaya Adho Gatva Bhangshana Sandhi Mubekya Granthi Mubekya Sthitva Aparati Kriyamanita Kalantarena Palaposham Pravesha Mushka Sopam Mahapadayati Adhmatava Vastriva Atata Pradirgaha Sashopo Bhodi Sashaktam Mahapirtam Avvidrasya Bodhvam Upeiti Vimuktasya Punaradhmayate Tam Antravruddhim Asadhyam Nitya Rakshade Antravruddhi is produced due to exercises beyond the capacity of a person like carrying weight or maybe fighting with others and so on which increase the intra-abdominal pressure result in a displacement of the structure of the viscera into the scrotal area through the inguinal canal. Now that the inguinal canal is a, the Vamsana Sandhi mentioned by Sushula and it presents as a, a swelling. So locally when it is presented as swelling, we use the term as bibonocele. Then as it comes towards the scrotum, it is called as incomplete hydrocele and uh, incomplete hernia. And when it reaches to the scrotum, we completely covers up the area, then it is called as a complete hernia. So bibonocele incomplete or complete. These are the three stages of the hernia formation as we study now. Sushana has mentioned it again the similar issue, a granthi rupena. Initially it's a granthi, bivanosil. Then it results in a swelling which is a, uh, which has not reached the palakosha, aptapta palakosha. Then aptapta palakosha, uh, when it reaches to the uh, palakosha. So that stages of hernia formation, bivanosil, incomplete and complete are Granthi and Aprapta Phalakosha Antarvurti, Prapta Phalakosha Antarvurti, though Sushil has not mentioned these as three stages obviously, is understood like when Sushil mentions about this progress, that is understood as it. Then the, uh, as, as for the current knowledge again, the causes for the hernia formation are almost the same like there would be a strain on the muscles or the inability of the muscles or some abnormality of the muscles here which cannot sustain the uh, uh, stress or of course there is one more of obvious is uh, the congenital. Congenital is one variety which Sushul has not mentioned. Now the other issue is uh, Sushul has said that it is a reducible swelling. So a swelling which comes in and then it can be reduced and uh, the swelling when it is reduced it can even produce some gurgling sound. Now a gurgling sound in case of a hernial sac is characteristic of enterocele when the intestines are the contents. 
Of course, now you may have know that there could be many hernia conditions where the contents could be other than hernia. Any structure of the abdomen can be a content of the hernia and in such conditions it may not be a producing the sound. So gurgling sound is due to the air pressure. So enterocele uh, is a, the sign or the enterocele should have exactly the same sign as that of the andrubhati. Anyway, all the other varieties also can be considered as a dandruvati. Of course, we may now generalize. The herniation may occur not only in the inguinal area, it can occur in anywhere in the abdominal area where there could be a defect, structural defect like umbilicus or maybe in the sagittal uh, uh, lumbar and so on where the muscles are involved. Or of course, now we have also another classification as a, a internal herniation where the structures tend to get displaced within the cavity of the abdomen where they may enter into an abnormal area and then get obstructed uh, uh, or get uh, twisted over. Now, this internal hernia also can occur. Maybe from a broader meaning point of view, all these can be considered as antaruddhi, though the exact meaning of the antaruddhi mentioned by Susuri is related to inguinal hernia. Anyway, so all such conditions can be considered as antaruddhi. But the Ati Maitanatha, Ati Brahmacharyadva, Ati Brahmacharyanim, Chirotsustram, Rajaswaram, Dilgaroram, Karkasharomam, Sankirnaromam, Nigudaromam, Alpadvaram, Mahadvaram, Apriyam, Akamam, Achauksha, Sadila, Prakshalita, Yonim, Prakshalita, Aprakshalita, Yonim, Yoni Rogopa Sustram, Sumhavato, Vadusta Yonim, Vyonim, Vanadim, Atyakam, Pasev Manasya, Tata, Karaja Dashana, Vishal Sukha, Nipatana, Bandhanata, Hastavidata, Chatushpadi, Gamanata, Achauksha, Sadila, Prakshalanata, Avapiranata, Shukra Vega, Vigaranata, Maitanante, Aprakshalanata, the next is about the Upadamsha. Upadamsha is a disease produced due to a sexual activity. Now, abnormal sexual activities mentioned by Sushuda are quite wide varying. It could be like uh, excess of sexual activity or absence of the sexual activity for a quite a long period and maybe a virgin, a, a sexual activity with a virgin or ghosts who have not copulated for a long time because of the rigid structures over there or any of those conditions, Rajasvaram, Dilgaroknam, Karkashvaram, hygienic, unhygienic conditions of the area, maintenance of the unhygienic condition before and after the sexual indulgence or the trauma produced due to, to the genital organs during the activity can result in a ulcer lesion which is which may be presented as an ulcer or may be swelling, shate akshateva shvaitam, with an ulcer or non ulcerated swelling. That's considered as upadamsha. Upadamsha is a obviously a sexually transmitted disorder, a disease which is transmitted during the sexual activity. Sabancha vidaha, trivit do shehi prutak samastehi asujatiati. Now, among them, the first is vataja. Vataja tatra vatike. Parushyam, Tat Pariputanam, Saddam Mehrata, Parusha Shopata, Vividhashtra Vata Vedana. Now, this is exactly what you see in case of the Shankroid condition. Shankroid is a produced by Haemophilus decrae, and the incidence of this Haemophilus decrae in Western countries has become reduced, but still in India it is still prevalent. In India and the Asian countries, the incidence of Haemophilus is still quite high, it is a cause of concern, whereas in the Western countries, it has been reduced significantly, uh, maybe because of the use of condoms and so on, popularity of the use of condoms during the sexual activity, that's, the issues are different, we are not going to that part. The clinical presentation of the chancroid is classically a, an ulcer which is hard in nature, indurated, hard in nature, and initially it's small, then goes on becoming bigger, and later on it can result in a destruction of the testicle, a hard nodule, that's the hardness is the typical features as it. Now that's exactly what Sushra has mentioned as a parushyam stabdhamedrata, parusha shokrata, hard swelling is the typical feature of the chancroid. So when it comes to the chikitsa, we'll come to that part later on. So we'll just casually look at the issues now. Then Paitike in and characteristically chancroid doesn't present with the initial clinical symptoms of inflammation. Fever and other causes are lesser. There's a slow growing, a hard 
swelling which may become ulcerated. Whereas in case of the pitta variety of the Upadamsha, the deep features would be Jwaraha, Shwetuhu, Pakpa Udumbara Sankasha, Tivradaha, Kshiprapaka, Pitta Vedanasha. The patient will present with a febrile episode and there would be acute painful ulcer, swelling, which may be even looking with all the signs of information, Pakpa Udumbara, collection of the pus could be seen and uh, pus suppurative, it can result in a pus formation. Now this is typically seen in case of the syphilitic condition which is produced due to triparema. Syphilis incidence has become reduced remarkably. Now compared to earlier days, the incidence of the syphilis has become reduced remarkably. And uh, uh, the typical presentation of the syphilis is uh, not only the primary, the more consequences would be of uh, the later consequences of the uh, syphilis. The first symptom of the syphilis would be the same, there could be the systemic inflammation and the shanker, an ulcer is produced at the site. So, and it occurs within three to four weeks of the exposure. But that's not the important issue. That part may heal, shanker may heal temporarily, either spontaneously or with some other treatment. But the more detailed, the serious complications of the syphilis would occur much later and is classified as secondary, latent and tertiary phases. Tertiary is the last phase which can produce serious complications, multi-systemic complications. Secondary are the lesions which tend to occur during that next period of the four to eight weeks that could be a local swelling and systemic symptoms may occur which may reduce completely and for about a year or so patient may be totally asymptomatic. This is the most dangerous issue with the syphilis. Syphilis can produce a significant latent period where there will be no clinical symptoms. The tertiary symptoms like gametous lesions, huge heart swellings and cardiovascular pathologies, systemic pathologies, even CNS pathologies, paralysis like uh, can symptoms can occur which would be quite difficult to cure. So that's the most dangerous part of the syphilis. Of course, Sushla has not mentioned those issues. Sushla has mentioned only about uh, the initial phase where there could be signs of information. Later phases are not really involved. Anyway, that's about uh, the syphilis in the uh, brief as such, or Pittaja variety of Upadamsha. Then, Kapada Upadamsha, Shvaishnike, Shvayatuhu, Kanduman, Kachinaha, Snigdaha, Shveshma Vedanashta, there would be a swelling which is firm in nature and uh, uh, it, it looks smooth and this is exactly what we see in case of the lymphogranuloma venereum. Of course, lymphogranuloma venereum symptoms also are now becoming lesser, incidence is lesser, which is produced with the chlamydia organism. And this presents with the typical clinical symptoms of initially, the first within 3 to 30 days of the sexual indulgence, it is presented as a painless papule, characteristic of a painless papule. Later on, it involves lymph nodes, inguinal lymph nodes, and in the lymph nodes, it will present as a swelling, and that too, the swelling is quite huge in size, but comparatively painless. Local signs of inflammation may be seen, it may look reddish, but signs of inflammation are either very less or uh, not present as such. But third stage, that's the real problematic condition of lymphogranular malaria, where the anorectal symptoms tend to occur. Genito anorectal syndrome, the patient would have a swelling in the inguinal area and the rectum would be involved. Typical proctitis could be seen. When you put the proctoscope and you look at the anorectal, anal mucosa, typical inflammatory changes with the, the uh, this slough material can be seen. Often it may be confused with the hemorrhoids or maybe uh, confused with the um, uh, even fistula and so on conditions. So that proctite is, is in the real troublesome condition which can pursue, pursue, persist for quite a long time and can produce more serious symptoms. Patients would not bother in the initial stages. The painless papule or even that mild environment of the lymph nodes in the initial stages, patient may not bother about. Patient would come to you with the, the anorectal symptom and that's how it has to be identified and uh, uh, quite later on it may become quite troublesome as such. More about that therapy treatment issue we will consider when we go into the chikitsa. Then the rectal variety of Rupadamsha, the typical symptoms will be rectal, Krishna Spoda Pradhan Bhavaha, Atyaptam Asrut Pravutihi, Pittalingani Atyaptam, Dwaradaha Shoshashta, 
Yapya's jiva ka lagi da, this is yapya. That's exactly the clinical symptoms of genital herpes. Herpes also is a viral transmitted condition, which again occurs after the sexual indulgence. Usually occurs within a short period, within a week, the symptoms tend to occur. It starts with the multiple eruptions, and the eruptions would be typically either vesicular, reddish, or at times simply erythematous. But later on, it can become chronic, recurrent. The patients, most of the patients would have a situation where these lesions heal, tend to occur, and they tend to repeatedly occur and troublesome. And in later on, it also can involve the system, multiple systems, like CNS also could be involved in case of the genital herpes. And of course, genital herpes also is related to the immune compromised conditions. Later on, it can, it's often uh, is coexisting with the HIV like conditions. So, that's also another of the issue. So, presentation of the herpes, genital herpes, could be anything. It could be erythema with the uh, dry erythema or erythema with the loss of discharges, like, or recurrent where you'll have looking like something like a chronic ulcer like appearance can be seen. So presentation of genital herpes can be quite weight varying and it's again a troublesome condition. Incidence of the genital herpes is now increasing as such. That's the other part of it. Uh, that's again one of the conditions which you see now quite frequently. In Sarvaja, Trigosha variety, the Sarvalingalashanam Avadaranam Jashayak Sarkri Prabhupada Maranam Jeti this is typical of the papillomatosis. Papillomatosis also is produced due to virus, pap human papillomavirus. And uh, it's also a sexual transmitted disorder. And the uh, situations or symptoms may occur after quite a long period. It doesn't occur immediately. After a long period of the involvement, there will be gradually multiple wart like projections in the genital area, both in female and male, it can occur. And the warts can become quite proliferate, very huge, and it can result in a deformity, significant deformity of the shape of the uh, organ, penis, particularly penis, and even vagina is the same. The shape could be affected, and it results in a gross abnormality. That's the, exactly what you see in case of the Tridoshira Upadamsha. So that's about uh, the Upadamsha. The next part is about the Shripala. Kupitas Tridosha, Havatapita Shleshmano, Adha Prapanaha. Vamsana Uru Janu Jamhasu Avatishtamana Kalantarena Padam Ashritya Shani Shofam Janayanti Tam Shripada Mitya Dakshade Tat Trividam Vatapita Kapani Mitamiti Shripada Shilavat Padam Iti Shripadam where it results in a hard swelling of the foot, hence it is considered Shripada. But it's not limited only to the foot. Sushad refers to the issue. Shripada can occur elsewhere in the body too. And hence, it's uh, that hard swelling is a characteristic feature, and hence it is often related to the lymphedema. Now, in lymphedema, when the lymphatic vessels tend to obstruct, get obstructed, the immediate consequence, of course, lymphatic fluid is an accessory to the circulation. Uh, see, the venous end of the uh, venous side of the circulation helps in the transmission of the fluid from the interstitial space, tissue space to the circulatory chambers. And uh, the arterial end, the blood, uh, the fluid will be uh, leaking into, reaching into the tissue space. Now, to maintain a normal condition of the tissues, the fluid which is uh, leaked out at the arterial end should be equal to the fluid which is sucked out at the venous end, which may not be the equal, perfectly equal throughout. There could be slight residual fluid left over, and that residual fluid left over is drained to the lymphatic system. So, lymphatic system is primarily an accessory to the circulatory system. Along with that, it can even suck out the substances which may not be possible to be sucked into the circulation, like solid substances, uh, tissue, residues, and so on. Of course, lymphatic system also has other function of immunologic issue, but when it comes to the question of lymphedema, the issue is of about that uh, uh, con, uh, uh, this, um, uh, importance of uh, that drainage function of the lymphatic system is uh, the uh, most uh, attention drawing issue. So we will discuss only that part now. See, what happens is uh, the lymphatic vessels, the lymphatic vessels are blind tubules which start at the tissue space and then they reach to the lymph nodes where the lymph fluid gets filtered. So whatever that residual solid substance which gets into the lymphatic system is filtered or maybe destroyed and so on. 
So after many layers of filtration, the lymph fluid adds to this circulating blood. Now, if the lymphatic vessels get blocked, the initial would be that fluid will be accumulated in these tubules and hence these brain tubules they become distended. So when the fluid is accumulated in the tissue space, it will be pitting, soft. And you may have the local sense of inflammation. As the fluid gets shifted to the uh, brain tubules and the tubules that tend to get dilated, the swelling becomes harder because now the fluid is now within the uh, tube as such, within a sac-like structure and hence cannot be displaced, it becomes harder. Later on, the body's response would be to produce more and more lymphatic vessels so that any of these lymphatic vessels may be successful in draining the fluid. Now, these vessels, if they get successful in draining the fluid, okay, the edema may get reduced. But if they do not, then the fluid will, you will have accumulation of the fluid and multiple uh, formation of these tubules. Along with that, some of these fatty substance, which otherwise would have got drained, would be accumulated over that uh, at the area of edema. And that makes the tissue harder. So, important is in case of the lymphedema, Though in general, when we say lymphedema, we always say hard swelling or non-pitting swelling. You have a state where there would be pitting initially, a pitting edema, which may become softer or later on non-pitting, and then it becomes harder and then it can result in the changes in the skin. Now, these three stages of the lymphedema, irrespective of the cause, whether it's pilarial or non-pilarial lymphedema, may be considered as sleeper. Of course, there are some clues which say that Sushruta has considered the pilaria as the sleeper. We will come to that part also. But non pilarial lymphedema conditions also have a similar course as it, and hence it is better to consider the sleeper as a lymphedema. Now, in case of water sleeper, the clinical symptoms will be Karam, Krishnam, Parusham, Animitani, Lulam, Parisputasi, Mohuchaha. Now, this is exactly the later stage of lymphedema. Later stages of lymphedema where the, uh, all the vessels have become multiplied and the whole skin is swollen and the cutaneous irritation has occurred due to the uh, deposition of those insoluble substances and it results in a hyperkeratinization. The keratin tissue becomes hardened and this is what we see in majority of the patients after a long term. Usually it takes a long term like more than six months to this reach to this stage and that's exactly what's considered as a Vatanya sleeper, where the surface would be khara, rough, blackish, and they, it may even rupture. It can produce multiple complications. It may rupture, it may produce gangrenous status, and so on. So, this uh, is stage is called as elephantiasis. Now, bird elephantiasis simply suggests about a chronic stage of lymphedema where the skin has become rough, black, compared to comparable to the skin of the elephants. That's the idea of nomenclature. Then Pitta Jantu Pita Bhasam Isha Tundu Jaradaha Prayam Tesleshma Shvetam. Now that's the point. Like Pitta Jantu is a, then it is a yellowish in color and moderately soft. Symptoms of inflammation like Jara is seen. This is exactly the acute phase. As I said in the initial phase, there will be signs of inflammation. Pitting edema, that's the Pitta Jantu. Later on, it becomes somewhat softer and pale. That's the state of Kapaja. So, Vataja, Pitaja, Kapaja, variety of the sleeper can be now considered as three stages of the lymphedema, bad three types of the lymphedema. We now consider these as three stages. Sushura has named them as the three types. Now, uh, of course, from the therapy point of view, there would be a difference in the approach to the therapy in these stages. In the initial stages where the lymphedema is a soft, yet you will try to minimize the skin changes. Whereas in the la last stages, you try to repair the skin changes. Now, when it becomes very chronic and uh, the uh, kafaja, that's uh, the long delayed stages, like right, it can result in a huge swelling where there could be a pool of the lymphatic. This is the kafaja variety. Uh, there was an error. This Veshmaja word should have come to this page as such. Srinkhavasam mandavedanam bharikam mahakritikam kantakai hupachitam cheti. The Kapaja variety would have the Snithavabhasam, soft appearance and Mandavedra pain and that's exactly the long stage of the uh, lymphedema where the skin changes have not occurred. There would be pools of the lymphatic vessels which are dilated and hence it will produce 
areas of irregular consistency. Some areas are softer, some areas are thicker. In the next stage, it becomes skin involved. The skin becomes thicker. That's what we see in the bodily variety. Now, of course, this uh, exactly to whatever I said as the stages of lymphedema, as it is studied now, the initial stages where it will be soft, then gradually, between, gradually it becomes hardened, the color also gradually changes, and then it becomes uh, the skin in all and quite huge as it. That's uh, exactly the feature. So, I would consider this as uh, the initial variety, initial stage of Pitaja, and then the Kapaja, then the Vataja as it. Dr. Sumatra Atitam, Ati Mahatu, Valmi Kadatam, Prasad Mithivardini, and the prognosis of this lymphedema would be depending upon one, the duration. When it is there for more than a year, a chronic lymphedema is a virginia, cannot be treated. And Ati Mahatu, very huge swelling, or Valmi Kadatam, where the surface has become rough and looks like a frond, Prasad widespread, involving widespread area, is considered as a virginia. Trinia Petan Jania, the Sleeperani Kapuchia, the Guru Tonjam Hatu Jesman, Nastic Benaka Pata, though water a pitta de Kapa variety of the sleeper are mentioned, the predominant dosha in this sleeper is a Kapuja, Kapa variety, and hence when it comes to the question of treatment, the primary treatment would be Kapagna treatment as such. Purana of the Guista has a word, Rutusha Sitra, Yedesha, Tishja, and the sleeper and him Sheshadaha. Sushura has considered sleep as an endemic disorder, diseases which tend to occur in the certain areas where there is a tendency for the stagnation of the fluid and according to Sushura it is in the Sarva Shitaraha, cold, those areas which are cold as such. Uh, but now what we know is about the pyloidiasis, particularly pyloidiasis, which is the most common cause for the lymphedema. And when we say lymphedema, it's not that all lymphedema are produced with the pyloidiasis, but most common cause. It's produced due to, or it is transmitted due to the vector of mosquitoes, which is again well known. So, mosquitoes which has, have a vector, and those areas where the mosquitoes are more common, it, the incidence of the pyloidiasis also are more common. And it is related to the geographical characters. Now, this data, whatever we see, is the data given by the central government. But practically, this differentiation of the endemic area zones is not so accurate. You will find it that the uh, lymphedema is present. Failure is present almost at the same level throughout, particularly more in the city areas, urban areas than in the rural areas. That's because the mosquitoes are more in the urban areas than in the rural areas, with the uh, vectors, right? Now, uh, the uh, uh, so mosquitoes they tend to proliferate more in warm area than in the cold area. That's uh, one of the facts, right? But Shushra has mentioned the other way, Shitara in the cold region. These are all the difference of perception. Though Shushra has not mentioned about the role of the mosquito as a vector, the uh, geographical distribution and a factor that uh, the environmental factors would add to the incidence of the malariasis are well known and well described in Sushla. Now, Padabhata Hastayura api Shriparaj Jayatendra Karnakshi Nasipo Sudeshu Keti Richandi Tarbitaha The lymphedema can occur elsewhere too, though the maximum incidence is in the lower limb. Now, incidence in the lower limb is more common in case of pyloidiasis because lower limbs are more exposed to the mosquito bites than the upper limb uh, due, due to the lifestyle factors as such. It can occur elsewhere too, and the swelling could occur in any other organ of the body where there is a lymphatic drainage. And Shushan has mentioned it could be Karna, Akshinasa, Vosta, uh, ears, uh, eyes, or nose, or even the legs. These are the areas where it can occur. With this, we conclude this chapter. Shushan Samhita Nidana Sane, Vruddhi Upadam Shashlipadam Nidanam Nama, Dwarashwadhyaya Hap. We will continue in the next class about the Kshudra Doga. If there are any questions, I will try to answer. Then. Like there are some questions. Why does mumps uh, virus uh, specifically affect testes? Of course, why for this we don't have an answer. It's about what we see. See uh, that it's a adenovirus. Mumps are produced with adenovirus and they have a preference to glandular tissue. Uh, most commonly it involves the salivary gland and the in around 30 percent it reaches to the testicles. Why it prefers testicles? No definite answer for that. 
then uh, according to samprapti of libala the doshas first take ashraya in uh, vamsana later there is shofa in pada but usually in impedima initially we can see swelling in the legs later lymph nodes becomes palpable how to understand no that's not true see in case of the phalariasis the initial stage of the phalariasis it will be lymphedi- lymph nodes which are involved lymphadenitis in now this is true in case of the phalariasis there will be always a lymphadenitis and lymphadenitis also is more common in inguinal area than the other areas of course elsewhere too if the phalariasis produces lymphedema there will be initially a stage of lymphadenitis in involvement of the lymph node and then it results in the blockade of course uh, that part i have not mentioned i have mentioned only the lymphedema condition so lymphadenitis is the first stage of the phalariasis and that's what sushra has mentioned clearly like vamsana that, that the swelling is present in the vamsana statistically it is common like in phalariasis inguinal lymph nodes are more commonly involved than the other lymph nodes and the lower limb becomes involved uh, but again it can occur elsewhere too so it's quite obvious but of course i have not explained that part in the discussion so that's a correction okay fine right so any other questions right so we'll conclude today we'll con- continue in the next session